So, so but let's let's we, we we touched on it at the top of the the show about what hockey in this country means to every small town. And I th- yeah. I think with with the travel that you do uh, on for the Sunday show, for what you've done for Hockey Day, and heck, hey, what you do when you go back to Red Deer, this is what this is what hockey in this country is all about, isn't it? Well, you're so right, John, because, I mean, even even in Oakville, where you and I have lived, uh, when, when your son, Jake, used to go to the Montessori school there and play uh, street hockey out front of the facility, and I, I just, it always comes back to that. It's as simple as either road hockey or some kind of an outdoor game, and today at the rink, just we had four of the players come on and uh, take questions from the students around the west end of the island, and Cody Cece and Ryan Dezingle of Ottawa, Taylor Hall and Adam Henrique of the New Jersey Devils, and always their answers came to the grassroots and to thank the people. Like They have a Zamboni driver here in O'Leary, 35 years, Al McBain, sharp as a tack. I sat with him this morning at practice, and he was saying, oh, and Ron, you're at Calgary again this summer, and he was leading the conversation, and he's been a, a pillar of their rink out there. And In, in a small town, uh, you know, it's the tonic. Like, this is a summer paradise PEI but the winters uh, are dark and uh, dreary and the tonic is hockey and the people get together at the rinks and even another neat thing today last year's was in Lumbee BC they played the game in Vernon but the woman who inspired the story of Lumbee winning Craft Hockeyville a year ago was Rhonda Cat. Her son or her husband Peter died of a heart attack, and so she created a great initiative to uh, help uh, with defibrillators and awareness. And uh, I met her boys, Lyndon and Jace, at uh, Rogers Hometown Hockey in Vernon about six months later. Gene Principe had hosted the uh, Craft Hockeyville show, and I mean, it just becomes a family tie, right? Uh, and, and it's unending. It's just incredible the number of uh, connections that are made through through the big game, but it all starts in the small town. Uh, Ron, big question. I don't keep track of things, but beyond this, are you back in for another year? Well, I, I, hope, uh, I, I seem to remember it was Doug McLean that got me back. Okay, uh, yeah. Well, so I'll have to ask him tonight. Well, we're going to interview Pierre Dorian. So I, and it's kind of neat that his second in command all his life, it seems, is uh, Jim Clark's now with the Ottawa Senators as their head of pro scouting. But yeah, we're back. Grapes is back. He's with me here. I couldn't get him out of my room last night. I had First, I had a, a little bite to eat with Trevor Birch, who's a police officer in Summerside that Darren knows really well. Gave Darren his driver's license back this summer when he, he left it at the grocery store. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I had a bite to eat at a really great restaurant in the rink here called 511, and then Don and I rendezvoused for our normal tête-à-tête to plan what, what he was going to say tonight. And he's in, he's in rare form and ready for what will be God, John, what his 39th or 38th season on yeah. in Canada, which is beyond belief. You know, yeah, for most of us. But you know, you yeah. Meant, yeah, but you mentioned Ron, all those places, and PEI, Doug's from, other people are. But that why has it been such a special spot for you? Well, I met Brad Richards. Uh, I was on the island during the lockout that wiped out the year, 0405. And we did movie night in Canada on Saturday nights, and I would go <laughs> and kind of th- thread hockey a little bit into the three movies we'd run back-to-back on Saturday nights. And I was in PEI to go to UPEI, interview some of the Panthers, and there was a speaker of the house on the island, Kathleen Casey. She introduced me to the minor hockey scene in Charlottetown. So I had all my guests lined up. And then found out that Brad Richards and Grant Marshall, two Stanley Cup champions, were available. So I asked Brad to come on, and he did. And then he said, where are you going after? And I said, I'm going to the Merchant Man Pub across from the Delta in Charlottetown. He said, well, that's okay, Ron, but it closes at 10 on a, this night. You should come to St. James Gate. And then Brad, we all met there in what I thought was like a bar in the Soho in New York City. It was way more chic than I was expecting in Charlottetown and the guys were all in black and they looked like metrosexuals and anyway it was a really upscale great evening and he then ran me over to another bar to meet the Kennedy boys sons of Forbes Kennedy and it just went from there uh, I came down to his golf tournament every summer I met a lot of the people that Darren knows really well the boys and girls clubs Trent Burt has a great uh, event it's just I don't know what it is about the island. You know, I, I can only assume, having never read Anne of Green Gables, but she sort of painted this idea of a, of an idyllic summer, of an idyllic situation where time stands still, and you'd really do experience it on the island like you don't anywhere else. I mean, I love I'm Cape Breton air roots, and I love the uh, Nova Scotia scene, and I love the Newfoundland scene. But there's a bit of frenzy to those scenes. There's a bit of real uh, relaxation to the PEI scene.